Hey everyone, it's Kevin Madison again here with a short uh, statistics video on interpreting p-values. So when you run a t-test or any other statistical test that you might come across, you're going to end up with a p-value, and the p stands for probability. And it is the probability that any difference you see between the two groups you're looking at is due to chance alone. So when the p-value is high, that means there's a high likelihood that the difference is due to chance, and therefore you're less confident about your results. And when the p-value is low, that means there's a low chance that it's due to just chance alone, and therefore you feel more confident that there is a significant difference in the data that you are looking at. So when we look at p-values, uh, the general benchmark we use is 0.05. That is sometimes referred to as your alpha level. You want to set that number before you run the test because you wouldn't want to end up with a 0.06 and then say, oh, actually, I was considering anything under a 0.10 as significant. That would be disingenuous. So most experimenters say in the methods of their of their paper, they'll say alpha was set to 0.05 or whatever they set it to. Some like medical journals and such will set p-values much lower if they really want to demonstrate that um, some sort of medical procedure is significant and be highly, highly confident that it is indeed significant and not going to have any negative effects. So you can set alpha lower or slightly higher, but again, generally people will go with 0.05. So if the p is less than 0.05, we reject our null hypothesis because that means there is less than a 5% chance that the difference between the groups is due to chance alone. Uh, and generally our null hypothesis is that there's no difference between the groups. So we are then able to say there is a difference. There is a significant difference. And that's usually pretty exciting because you designed the experiment because you thought there would be a difference. And look, you actually found it. So that can be great, and then you can discuss why, why there was a difference and what that means and everything that goes along with that. However, if the p-value is greater than 0.05, we end up failing to reject our null hypothesis, which means we have to say there, there is no difference between the groups, and we were not able to detect a significant difference between the groups. So what do we do then? What, where do we go from there? Um, so usually when your p-value is greater than 0.05, you can look at several different reasons why there was no difference, no significant difference. One is that maybe there were some outliers you should have removed, and, and you should really look at outliers in, the, in your data before um, looking at p-values, because if you look at it afterwards and you start changing your data, that is not really the way to do things. So uh, you need to look at outliers before running your, your test, um, confounding variables might be present, so maybe you need to design a subsequent experiment that'll get at some, some of the variables that are sort of mucking up your data and causing all sorts of confusion there. So those are both viable things to, to take into consideration for next time. But the most common thing that people say when they get a p-value greater than 0.05 is, I had a small sample size, and really what they're saying by that is that they had low statistical power. And that sounds a little scary, low statistical power. Like, what, what does that mean? Um, and how can I avoid it? So uh, statistical power is, is the probability of actually rejecting your null hypothesis when you should, as in there actually is a difference. Like, if we could use a crystal ball to uh, look at all the data that's, that's available, it would show a difference, but because we don't have a crystal ball and because we don't have unlimited time and money, we were only able to sample a little bit, and therefore we came up with the results that we did. Um, so what is the probability, given the data that we have, that we'll actually find a difference when we should? I know this sounds a little bit theoretical, so let me just um, show you with some data how it might look. So let me get us into Excel here. So in Excel here, I've set up data for a t-test comparing atmospheric CO2, carbon dioxide, in parts per million. And we're going to compare this between 2011 and 2012. 
And here's the data, the parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere, and it's for each of the 12 months. And so what we can do, this is actually set up for a t-test. We're going to try and get the p-value for is there a significant difference between these two years. So let's go here. We'll do equals t-test. There's the formula popping up. It's asking me for array 1. So I'm going to record, we're going to sort of draw down there for array 1, which is 2011. Hit a comma and a space, and then I go down for 2012. And now here I have to answer this, this tails question, which is, can always be a bit confusing. If you have only two choices, there's one or two tails. Two tails is when you think there's going to be a difference, in this case, between 2012 and 2011, but you're not sure whether 2011 might be greater than 2012 or 2012 might be greater than 2011. To you, it doesn't really matter. That would be a two-tailed test because it can go in either one of two directions. However, a one-tailed test is when you specifically think there's a reason to believe that one group's going to be higher than the other. In this case, that is where we stand. We think that 2012 will be higher than 2011 due to increased release of CO2 into the atmosphere. So it's a one-tailed test because we have a specific idea of the directionality of the change. So I'm going to enter 1 there. And then when it comes to type here, I'm going to put in 3. That is two sample unequal variance. It's very rare that we actually have equal variance. Um, and there is some reason to think this could be a paired test, but I'm not going to get into that now. So I'm just going to choose 3. And whoops, I have to close the bracket, the, uh, parenthesis, the brackets there and hit enter. And here's our p-value, uh, 0 0.03488. That is indeed less than 0 0.05. So we can reject our null hypothesis. And we conclude that um, CO2 is significantly greater in 2012 than 2011. So that's pretty pretty exciting because it actually matches what we would we would predict would be the case um, based on what we know about increased uh, release of co2 into the atmosphere not a good thing but actually corresponds to what we would what we would predict so um, but what would happen if we had lower statistical power what if we had a lower sample size well let me just delete January and let's watch what happens to the p-value there it's at currently at 0 0.03 when I delete this data it went up to 0 0.005. When I delete more data, it increases even more. And let's say we came into the situation having only three months of data, October, November, and December. So let me delete these other three months. And look at what's happened to the p-value. It has moved from 0 0.003 to 0 0.067, um, and that is no longer significant if the alpha is at 0 0.05, and so that means that we would fail to reject our null hypothesis, and we might conclude that there is no difference in CO2, whoops, between 2011 and 2012. We would say there's no difference in CO2, no significant difference in CO2 between 2011 and 2012. Well, that would actually be inaccurate based on what we just saw, that there is a difference. And it's inaccurate uh, because we have low statistical power in this case. So we found a p-value greater than 0 0.05, but it doesn't mean that there's actually no real difference. It means that we couldn't detect it because we had low statistical power in this particular set of three months. We would need a larger sample size. So that is the important, importance of looking at statistical power. Let me take us back here to the um, presentation. And again, statistical power is the probability of actually rejecting your null hypothesis when you should. In that example, with just three months worth of data, we had a low statistical power. And that was the problem there. So one solution, 
And this is a little bit tricky, but I, I think it can be a, a good way to think about your data beforehand, is to conduct a perspective power analysis. And this not only sounds cool, but it's a great way for you to really contemplate your hypothesis in a more um, explicit way before you go out and collect all this data. So what do you do? You're going to go and look at your baseline data. What is baseline data? That's any data you might have available, um, either some, some that you've initially collected and you haven't done sort of a full study, or it might be data from other published studies on the topic that you're look, looking at. Get a hold of some data that can give you a sense of what's going on in the, the area you're, you're going to look at. And then consider the variation in that data. And consider how much the data might change due to your whatever study manipulation you might be putting in place. So the change in the means between a before and after or between two groups you're looking at, that change is known as the effect size. And uh, I'm going to talk about that. Let me just show you. Let me get out of here because these are again sort of theoretical concepts and let me show you how this baseline data and what this might look like if you were looking at test scores and let's say you have eight students so here we go we have eight students a through h we'll just use those codes and here's test scores these are initial test scores on whatever topic you might be looking at and you want to see if you implement some sort of lesson plan or some sort of new uh, way of teaching this if it can get this average score from a 75 up higher okay so that's your goal and you're going to implement a new lesson well will you actually be able to find a statistically significant difference so I've actually added in some fake data um, here test scores after your lesson and this is just both of these are made up data, but let's just say this, this is completely um, arbitrary data just so we can understand what might happen here with statistical power. And what you can see is that the average did increase from a 75 to an 83%. And actually, that's a 10% increase in their average score. So that's pretty good. So is that going to result in a statistically significant difference? Let's put in a t-test again. And let's highlight array one. Let's highlight array two. Let's do one tailed because we think it's going to inc we think their scores are going to increase. And in this case, we're going to actually choose one for pair because it's the same student taking the test before and after. So the data is paired in that student A, this is their test score before, this is after the lesson. So I'm going to choose that one. And then I'm going to close that off. And look at that, 0 0.07. We had a 10% increase in the score, which would seem like that would be good, but it's still a p-value of 0 0.07. It's not significant. What would happen, let me just get rid of this, if you had a larger sample size? Let's copy these. Just double it. I'm just going to control C, control V. And let's say instead of eight students, you have 16. So let me go here and let's see. This is actually the p value with eight students. And this is going to be p-value with 16. Okay, so let's go equals t-test. I'm going to highlight this longer data set now because there's more uh, a larger sample size. And then we are going to do the next one. And we'll do one again and one again. And look at that. It's now significant. So it is possible to detect a 10% increase in test scores when you have 16 students but not 8. Okay? And that really gets at what would be the sample size that you would need. If you're wondering that, you can start to play around with data 
and see what happens. We could also go another direction here. Let me delete this extra data. Let's go back to our original eight. And we had the average here. Seventy-five, and we had the average here of eighty-three, and that was a ten percent increase. Well, if we increase this to a much higher increase, what what kind of increase will we need to make this significant? Well, here we see that it's already dropped to below 0 0.05, and that is significant. Um, so, but that's a larger increase. That's about a 14% increase. All right, so most of the statistics programs that you'll look at will um, be able to report what the um, statistical power of your test is. And, um, and, and But it's generally better to think about this beforehand, which is why I showed you how you can sort of mess around in Excel to get a sense of what is the sample size you might need, given the change you're expecting and the variation that exists, and to uh, be able to get a sense of that before you even run any statistics. And then the last thing I want to mention is how some things can be not statistically significant, but actually still biologically significant. So the classic or a classic example of this is amphibian declines, where because many amphibians have uh, a lot of variation in their population uh, sizes, so they can really grow very rapidly in one year and have a lower year one, and th they're also hard to detect in a sample in many cases because they're very cryptic. Um, but it was very difficult for scientists to demonstrate that there was a statistically significant decline in amphibians, even though they were quite certain that there was a biologically significant decline going on. It just wasn't showing in the data and the p-values we're not reflecting that because there was so much variation. And so um, that's a classic example of where you, you wouldn't want to just conclude simply, hey, no statistical significant difference, end of story. You want to say, actually, there's no statistically significant difference, but our power was low because our variation was so high. And uh, the other thing is you can definitely highlight suggested trends in your data and things that look interesting, even if they're not leading to a statistically significant uh, difference.